welcome to a quick video of mine on ETTL Flash. A friend of mine has asked me to do a video on ETTL Flash. And how, go, how do I go about using it as full flash inside? So, I'm going to pretend that this vase here is a bride sat down on the chair. I faced her towards the light. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll just show you. Um, if you look at the lights, I've closed the curtains to let in less light to give me the appropriate use more water a bit to give me the appropriate light on the vase. One thing to remember, what a lot of photographers seem to forget is when you're moving the bride towards the window light, one you always need to turn the body away from the light so that you get a nice highlight next to shadow. So you might turn the body away and the face back to the light. But the, the nearer you have your subject to the window light, the brighter the highlight will be and the darker your background will be. So one way to cheat is to move the vase, well not the vase, but the person, into a, a dimmer bit of light in the room. Because what will happen is, yes, you will have to turn up your ISO a bit more to expose for it, but your background won't be as dark. So if I take the shot of this now and look at the background, there won't be much difference between the highlight and the background. But if I move this, va this vase, this person, right up to that window, which a lot of photographers do, yes, you'll better use a lower ISO and a better shutter speed, but your background will go into real darkness really quick. Um, but you can still do that and then you can fill it with flash. So whichever way you want to do, I'm just reminding you that that is a good little tip for you. I'm doing it in the middle of the living room, so the light is not that bright here. If I go move this vase right over to the window and shoot towards a video camera, the background will be really dark, which you can use that for effect. Um, and you can use a lower ISO on that should be. So I'm going to show you how to use ETTL flash. Um, and I, I've actually found a scenario where it's not going to get it right, so we're going to have to quickly bob in the manual. Um, I'm going to use ETTL fill flash, right? So to do this, I've got my camera set in AV. I'm in a low light situation, so I'm at f2.8. I could shoot at f1.4, f1.8, f2, but I'm shooting at f2.8 because I want a little bit of depth of field. I'm shooting at f2.8, and I'm going to expose for this vase let's pretend it's somebody's face right or an half length body shot she's getting her makeup on and you're photographing it right so when i say expose for the highlight what i mean is i'm going to put the camera in here at f28 at iso 400 i'm going to take a shot centered on the meter in av let the camera i've chosen the aperture let the camera no flash and i'm going to look at the highlight and see if i'm happy with the highlight if i'm not happy with the highlight or the bride's face i will to expose a little bit so I'm happy with a highlight and then what you probably find out is the shadow will be a little bit dark. So we can either fill the shadow with a reflector, which I would rather do because it's easier, but you need another person. So for this video we're going to use the camera. Is the camera in shot? Yeah, we're going to use fill flash. We're going to bounce it up and over to the back and then I'm going to bounce it to the right to come back in and hit the shadow. So let me just go and set a look at camera. Right, I'm at a 50th of a second at f2.8. Um, now, that shutter speed is a bit slow anyway, because, but I'm getting a blink. Because this highlight is so bright, I'm getting a blink. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell AV to underexpose the shot for me. Not flash exposure compensation, exposure compensation on a cannon. Uh, the flash is not even on yet. Well, it's on, but it's not firing. Right, you're going to see those two shots. So now, I've got my highlight sorted, but my background is fairly dark. Now, if I'm happy, shoot, and you don't. But obviously for the video, we want to use some ETTL fill flash. Um, off camera flash would be a little bit better, because if I really wanted to, I could just come behind this stool here, put it on the floor, point it up to the back on the ceiling, and just set it off. 
and just let it fill in a bit. But we're going to use on camera flash. So now I'm going to turn on my flash and I'm going to turn the exposure compensation down. I'm going to start off at zero and show you what ETTL is going to do for us. Meaning zero on the flash exposure compensation. Lock that up. I'll just lock it up a bit. And you'll see, looking at before and after, the flash. I'm going to tell you what it's done. The flash has gone off in automatic ETTL that, uh, and it's just filled all the background, but it's killed the shadow. And that's what a lot of photographers do. I used to be guilty of it years ago, a couple of years ago. So, what I'm going to do is, you'll see it on the PC, I'm going to go back to the flash now and say, uh, I'm on automatic flash. That's way too much light. The light's just changed behind me for the bars as well. Um, so I'm going to have to re-expose for that. So if you see a difference in my shutter speed, I'm sorry, but it's the sun's just gone out behind the cloud. So it's it won't affect the exposure. And if I take the shot again, the flash will still fill in all the background. Because the flash, when I frame this up, can see all the background and I'm underexposing it nearly two full stops for the highlight. So what the flash is doing is when I focus it sees the video camera and all the dark background and it sees that this is underexposed and it tries to lift it all up to a neutral grey and that's why it just killed the shot. So now I've got to say well okay don't do that I'm now going to turn the flash exposure compensation down three full stops. And that's because out of skill, I know that that's where it's going to be. It might even need a bit more. So I'm going to turn the flash on. Oh, the flash is already on. And I've turned it down three full stops. So it's going to go off again, but now it's going to go off at three full stops less than it did before. Oops. And that is absolutely spot on, you'll see. What's happened there now, I've still got the vase, I've still got the shadow, it's lifted a little bit because of the fill, so it's not as dark. The background's not a bit brighter. It's not as bright as the highlight, but it's brighter. And I've used a perfect fill flash. And I've done it in automatic. The camera's in automatic. I mean, it's not in the green automatic, it's in the AV automatic. And the flash is in automatic ETTL. So that's how to expose a new spill flash. Always get your ambient reading first. So now I'm going to take the flash off camera, uh, the camera off the stand, and I'm going to tell the flash not to fire. And I'm going to do the same again as if we were in a real life situation. And I'm going to photograph the video camera, and I'm just going to do this in real life, and then I'll talk you through what I've done. So I'm going to go in AV, and I'm going to Start at f2.8 and off I go. No flash. f2.8. Right, so I'm at f2.8, 60th of a second, perfectly exposed. I'm looking at it and, and it looks good enough, but for the video, I'd probably leave that, but you'll see. For the video, I'm going to now use a bit of fill flash. And I'm also going to tell my camera to underexpose the video camera two thirds of a stop, which is this one. So there's my underexposure. And now I'm going to turn on the flash. And I'm going to start off at zero, as if we're a novice and we don't want. So now the flash is back to fully automatic. It's going to try filling the shadows for us on its own, which I know it's going to get it wrong, but you won't know. So let's go again. I've set my exposure for the camera. And you will see that that totally and utterly has killed the shot. It's way too much flash and it's blinking at me. So now I'm going to turn the flash down. Two full stops. And that's still not enough. So I'm now going to go three full stops. And that is perfectly great. You go to the first one and the last one. That's now perfect film flash. So in a real life situation, that's how quick I do it. But what happens if, if for any reason, let's go back to the vase.
Now, I'm going to do this in real, real time and say nothing to show you how quick it's going to take. So, I'm at F28, I'm at ISO uh, 250, I'll go to ISO 320, and I'm now going to do this as if it were a bride. So, and I'm not going to talk, I'm just going to get everything right and then tell you what I've done. Right, done, finished. Now, what I did there, I was in AV. I'm not going to tell the camera centre, you don't really need to know them. I was at F2A, I took a shot, centred on the meter in AV, that was blown out. I underexposed the stock, it was still blown out, the highlight. Underexposed another stock, still blown out. I went another third and then it wasn't blown out. And then I turned the flash on at minus three and bounced off this wall to fill in this shadow and the background. Not fully, it's not fully lit the background and fully lit the shadow, because that kills the shot. It's just a little bit of fill which makes the difference. Probably like putting a third, maybe an half a stop in Lightroom on the exposure for the background, but I've done it on the flash, so that when it comes to getting it on the PC, I don't have to bring noise into the shadows by turning them up. I've done it out of the camera. So, and that's how quick, you just see a couple of seconds, that's how quick I did it. And this is a very extreme highlight next to shadow. Um, it's because, if you look, I've closed the curtains and I've let a little sliver of light in to hit this highlight. It won't take three shots usually to get it right in AV. Most times, AV, you'll have centred on the meter and you'll just bounce a little bit of flash on the ceiling. Just to, Say you're videoing me now, AV will more or less get that centred and then you can just bounce the flash off the ceiling and just fill in a little bit of the shadows. Don't forget, you can do what I've just done in TV in manual, I could have gone to manual and underexposed the image and then bounced the flash in ETTL. A lot of people do not understand that ETTL flash can be used with manual settings. So if you're shooting your camera in manual, you can still use automatic flash. And I'll just show you that now. So we're going to turn the flash off. Disable the flash. I'm going to put the camera into manual. F2A, ISO 400. And I'm at 200 of a second. ISO 400, F2A, and it's showing, um, let me show that again. It's showing two full stops under exposed. Um, so the camera's now in manual. I'm now going to enable the flash in ETTL. So the camera's manual, so that won't change although the bloody light's just brightened up, I can see it out there. So I better just check this again before we go anywhere. Ah, it's all right, let me be quick. So it's okay. So now I'm gonna manual my camera, so my settings won't change for the bride. Uh, I'm in manual, uh, ISO 400, F28, 200 of a second, and the flash is in automatic ETTL. I have told it three full stops under what it thinks. Um, I'm now going to, oops, I'm going to use my hand. I won't use my hand for the purpose of the video. You don't have to, but if you do, you'll get a more precise look. So here we go. And you'll see that that is absolutely it's perfect fill flash. You won't be able to tell that I use flash on the picture. It just won't look like it. It lifts the shadow and it works and it's as fast as that. So remember, in AV, you can use ETTL. In um, TV, you can use ETTL. And in P, or in any of those modes, but get your ambient reading first. Now, you can turn your flash on and off. But luckily on the 60D, I go into the flash control and tell it not to fire. So that way I don't have to keep turning it on and off. I used to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. But now I can just quickly tell it not to fire. Come up, expose. Oh, that's nice, but I won't mind a bit of fill. Then turn the flash on in automatic. And then you know if it's too bright that it's your flash.